before the universe existed, there was Anu. This was the unchanging stasis. And into this stasis came Padomai, the agent of change that created the universe. From the chaos of creation came the Atada. These formless spiritual beings populated the universe. And of all of these beings, then came Akatosh. He was the first to acquire form and identity, and he was the first to bring the concept of time into the Elder Scrolls universe. This was the beginning of time in the story and in the game. In this series, we're going to explore various scientific concepts in the Elder Scrolls universe, and even though it may go against the logic of the game, we're going to ignore the magic, we're going to ignore the myth, and we're going to focus only on the science as we know it today. We are going to try to recreate the entire solar system and the entire universe in the Elder Scrolls as it's known to the characters in the game and use various games including Universe Sandbox 2 to explore the planets, the stars and the entire universe of this beautiful series of games. Welcome to What The Math and I hope you learned something new from this video. And welcome back! So in part 1 we actually looked at the Dwemer Orrery, uh, exploring the knowledge and understanding of cosmology in Elder Scrolls Universe and tried to recreate this using the Universe Sandbox 2. Uh, if you watched the previous video you know that it didn't work well, mostly because firstly in this game berry centers don't stay stable and it was very difficult for me to uh, make the actual Orrery the way it is. Uh, displayed in Elder Scrolls Adventures Red Guard, but secondly, there's a lot of things that didn't really add up. Specifically, things like you know, where does the star go? Where does the heat come from? Uh, how can uh, planets orbit around each other? How can planets orbit around Nern and uh, still have a stable orbit the way they do? So there's just things didn't really add up. And so today we're gonna uh, assume that there came a uh, equivalent of Copernicus in Elder Scrolls Universe. He was uh, uh, possibly a very uh, troubled individual who was not liked by the religious orders in Elder Scrolls. And he uh, realized that, well, um, things are not as they appear. Things may be a little bit different. Things may not actually s rotate around Nern and instead, instead rotate around uh, Magnus, the star. And so let's actually recreate this. We're going to go into uh, the new simulation here and right in the middle of everything, we're going to place Magnus. So this is going to be a very Magnus-centric universe. Now, here comes the problem with our understanding of Elder Scrolls planets. We don't really know the order. We don't know who and what would come first, who or what would come second. So we have to make an educated guess here. And here's the picture I'll be using. This is actually easily available online. Um, this is made by wonderful people at, I believe it's uh, Dwemer Studies, but um, you can also discover this on with, in, on other websites as well. And so this particular uh, photo or picture shows you, and here's actually a comparison of what we have from uh, previous knowledge on our planet. Look at how similar they are. This is Earth-centric um, and also Nern-centric uh, map. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically assume that this is wrong. We're going to assume that it all starts with Magnus. It's a Magnus-centric approach. And uh, what I'm going to be using is obviously this. And uh, we're t basically trying to place the planets in um, orbit around Magnus. Oh, and by the way, the planets are, like I mentioned before, are gods. And uh, in the actual universe, in, in Elder Scrolls universe, they uh, appear as spherical heavenly bodies. And they're basically a visual phenomena that are caused by mental stress. That's right, they're caused by mental stress, according to the mythology. Uh, and uh, each planet is an infinite mass of infinite size, but it, uh, it's surrounded by the void of oblivion, which is sort of the equivalent of space in, in the game. And because of this, the mortal eye, our eye registers them as bubbles within space. So this is how the planets are explained. And they are magical and they're also impossible. So this is all from the books and the lore in the Elder Scrolls universe. And there are eight planets except for Nern, and each eight represent a divine being. Each of them has a name, each of them has a specific sort of representation about which uh, we'll talk in future videos. Now, so if we actually look at this map again, and uh, you'll notice that um, so Secunda and Maser are the moons of Nern, and they seem to be um, uh, quite close, which is basically distance-based. And so we're going to assume that all of this is distance-based, and we're going to recreate the universe in that way. 
So let's start with NERN. We're going to place NERN at approximately one astronomical unit away. So it has similar to Earth pressure, atmosphere, and temperature and everything else. So this is our new NERN. Uh, kind of looks a little bit different from what we know about the Elder Scrolls universe. We're going to make a little bit more continents here. NERN has four continents, and the most important one is called Tamriel. This is where you spend most of your, if not all of your time, in um, Elder Scrolls games. And around NERN, we have two moons moon number one is relatively large in the sky so we're going to place this relatively close it is called masser and the second moon is a little bit smaller actually much much smaller orbits around masser and it's called secunda now I'm, I'm kind of thinking i may have placed these a little bit too close to each other so let's see how this goes we're going to hope that they okay that's not going well they're colliding with the planet and this is attempt number two and it looks like they're orbiting just fine so we have Master right there, Secunda, and Nern. So this is what it would look like if you were to look at the night sky from Nern and look at those beautiful moons. Here's another view of them uh, approaching Magnus and we might even experience a Magnus ellipse and no, so close those. So this is Master and Secunda and they're right there in the sky actually. What happened to my Secunda? Did it just fly away? Yes, it did. Unfortunately, it left Master. So we're gonna have to replace her again. I'm gonna have to place it a little bit closer so that it actually stays in close orbit to Masser. And hopefully this time it will actually stay there. All right, so that's uh, our moons and that's our planet. Let's go into the next uh, region here. And let's decide who or what is going to be next. So uh, judging by the picture that you see here, Arkai is the closest to us, which possibly means that it is a little bit closer to us than other planets. And it also seems to be on the other side of Magnus, so it's probably behind Nern. So we're going to place a randomly generated rocky planet right here, relatively close, only at about 1.2 astronomical units, and we're going to name this planet Arkai. And so here is Arkai, this is what it's going to look like. It's a very sort of desolate white planet that is basically a dead divine being in Elder Scrolls universe. Then a little bit closer to Magnus, we uh, and uh, closer to us as well, we have Zenithar, Mara, and Dibella, and all three are sort of co-orbiting each other. It it might be a triple planet system, but uh, if we go with the Dwemer Ori that we discussed in the previous video, it might actually be a bigger planet that has a moon, and then that moon also has a moon. So we're going to place Zenithar right here and Zenithar is a greenish planet and then we're going to have Mara orbiting around Zenithar and Mara is going to be a moon that has its own moon called Dibella. So this is sort of what I think is represented here in the picture and they are a little bit closer to the sun judging by the map you see. Uh, then we have a little bit closer to the sun still another red-ish planet called Julianos that has a moon called Stendar. And here they are, Stander and Julianos, and Stander right away starts smoking and steaming because it actually had a little bit of atmosphere and it's a little bit too close to Magnus the star. This will actually disappear after a while. And so, Mag uh, sorry, Julianos and Stander are right here, and this is the closest uh, two planets, I guess, binary planets, or you could call it a planet and the moon, uh, to, uh, to Magnus, to the star called Magnus. Now then, after Archai, on the other side, so this is uh, a little bit further away from Magnus, we have another bluish planet called Kinnereth. And this is my reimagining of Kinnereth, the blue planet that's uh, past Archai and uh, obviously after Nern as well. And the last planet, and the, probably the most important planet here, is Akatosh. Now, because Akatosh has such an importance in the uh, Elder Scroll mythology and because it, it does seem to have a lot of influence um, on other gods as well I'm going to make an assumption here that it's very likely similar to our Jupiter it's very likely a gas giant so we're going to actually place a random gas giant a little bit far farther away here and this is going to be an orange gas giant called Akatosh and here is the beautiful gas giant Akatosh that doesn't seem to have any moons, but that's not because they're not there. It's actually very likely because according to Dwemer uh, understanding of stars and according to their orrery rules, uh, they did not actually put any satellites or moons um, in their uh, orrery and usually did not list any satellites or moons of, uh, of the planets. This also implies that all of these other planets, especially um, 
these right here, uh, Zanithar, oh no, what happened to it? Uh, they're still here. Zanithar, Mara, and uh, Dibella, as well as Julianus and Standar. These are technically not really moons, they're actually binary planetary systems. Or in this case, it's actually a tertiary or a triple system. So this is actually three planets together. And so essentially this is sort of my understanding and my recreation of uh, the universe of uh, Elder Scrolls, uh, at least the inner part, the so-called Magnus, um, the inner solar system of this particular uh, beautiful and amazing uh, video game series. And of course, this is what I think it would look like if one day there was a, an equivalent of Copernicus in the Elder Scrolls uh, world that came in and decided to explain everything from the Magnocentric approach instead of the Nerncentric approach, which they uh, all believe right now. So just to kind of go through it one more time so closer to magnus we have uh, julianus and standar then a little bit farther uh, away from magnus we have zenithar mara and dibella this is a triple system then we have nern and its two moons maser and secunda then we have archai Kinnereth, and finally a gas giant Akatosh. There might be other gas giants here, there also might be um, other uh, planets that are actually larger than Nern, uh, but because we don't really have any information on them, we're going to assume that this is actually what it all looks like, and this is essentially the universe and uh, the solar system of Elder Scrolls in a nutshell. Anyway, hopefully you learned something ab about the way solar system works in this particular game and hopefully you enjoy this little scientific recreation of Elder Scrolls universe. Now obviously this is not canon, it's not a reality and uh, most people will obviously say that well it, you can't really use science to explain Elder Scrolls world because there's a lot of magic in it and I would actually have to agree with it but I still wanted to see if we can scientifically explain the cosmology in the game and if we can actually try to recreate it as well. Oh no I think uh, this is a pretty interesting re representation of the universe and it does make a little bit more sense if it's actually laid out in this way. Anyway, in the next video we're going to talk about something a little bit different and we might even focus more on individual planets and explain their mythology as well. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends, and also like this video if you've actually enjoyed it. Game you later and bye bye.